The SAT consistently asks about the number of solutions for an equation or system of equations. The first thing you should figure out is whether there's an x squared term somewhere in the question. This lesson covers what to do when there is an x squared. If there is not an x squared, then you're dealing with one or two linear equations, which behave differently and are covered in a separate lesson. If you do have an x squared, then you're probably working with a quadratic equation in some way. When a quadratic equation is written with two variables, an x and a y, then the quadratic will form a parabola. The number of solutions will be the same as the number of x-intercepts for the parabola, and there are only three possible outcomes. There are two solutions when there are two x-intercepts because the parabola crosses the x-axis. There is one solution when there is one x-intercept because the parabola bounces off of the x-axis. And there are zero solutions when the parabola curves away from the x-axis and never touches it. This idea forms the basis for all SAT questions that ask about the number of solutions when there's an x-squared equation. But the SAT will change the x-squared equation so that the solutions look different when we graph them. The most common change is replacing the y-coordinate in the equation with the number zero. If you enter equations like this into Desmos, they won't form parabolas. Instead, you'll see vertical lines at each solution, which would be the same place where we'd have an x-intercept if the equation were still equal to y. When the equation has one or two solutions, we will see one or two lines. But when there are no solutions, the graph in Desmos will be completely blank. If there's no x-intercept, then there's nowhere to put the line. This makes it a little risky to use Desmos in these situations because it's hard to be absolutely sure that there are no solutions. What if we just didn't zoom out enough on the graph to see the vertical lines? I recommend changing the equation by replacing the zero with a y so that we see the parabolas and can actually count the number of x-intercepts. An even more reliable method to solve these SAT questions is to use the discriminant. This is a special formula that tells us the number of solutions for a quadratic equation. As long as the equation is written in standard form, it doesn't matter if it's equal to y or to zero. The discriminant formula will work either way. We can substitute the values for a, b, and c into the discriminant formula to find its overall value. When the discriminant is greater than zero, which is every positive number, then the quadratic equation will have two solutions. When the discriminant is equal to zero, there will be exactly one solution. And when the discriminant is less than zero, which means that it's negative, there will be no real solutions. And you must memorize the discriminant formula and how it works to tell us the number of solutions. This is easier to accomplish if we know where the discriminant formula comes from. It's part of the entire quadratic formula, which tells us the specific values of the solutions for any quadratic equation. The discriminant is the part under the radical, and it is basically a shortcut that tells us the number of solutions without giving us the specific values of those solutions. Here's a simple example of why there would be two solutions if the discriminant is positive. With some hypothetical values, we could simplify the entire quadratic formula to three plus or minus radical five, where the five is the discriminant. Remember that the plus or minus represents two paths that we need to take. One solution would be three plus radical five, and the other would be three minus radical five. When we simplify with a calculator, we see that those are two completely different numbers, two completely different solutions. But let's see what happens when the discriminant is zero. In that case, we would end up taking the square root of zero, which is also zero. We can still think about the two paths of the plus or minus, but they won't make a difference. Three plus zero is the same as three minus zero. That's why we end up with just one solution, which would be three in this case. If the discriminant were negative, we'd have a much bigger problem. Now the discriminant is negative five. We can still break it apart using the plus or minus, but it won't solve the underlying issue. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. The radical would only produce imaginary numbers, which means there are no real solutions, which is what the SAT is interested in. Personally, I think that it's easier to memorize the discriminant formula if we know where it comes from, but the SAT will never explicitly ask you about this connection. Instead, they'll give you a variety of situations where you can use the discriminant to find the number of solutions. Let's look at a few examples. The simplest questions will give you a quadratic equation in standard form that is equal to zero. To use the discriminant, we need to pull the values of a, b, and c out of the equation. They represent the coefficients of the different x terms in the equation. In this case, a is negative four, b is six, and c is negative 10. Notice that the minus signs in the equation stay with the number that follows them. We can then plug these values into the discriminant formula, simplify with the calculator, and then understand the result. Since the discriminant is negative, we know that this quadratic equation will have no solutions. In this case, I think it would be easier to solve using Desmos. We can switch the zero to a y and graph the equation as a parabola. Since this parabola has no x-intercepts, we know this equation has no solutions. 
Remember that if we graph the equation with the zero, we would get an empty graph because there would be no vertical lines because there were no solutions. The SAT often asks for the number of solutions to a system of equations that includes a quadratic equation. In these situations, the SAT is really asking for the number of intersection points between the two graphs. To solve using the discriminant, we would first need to merge the two equations by substituting negative 7 into y. Then we need to rearrange the equation so that it's equal to 0. Now we can plug the values of a, b, and c into the discriminant formula. Simplify and we find that the discriminant is equal to 0, which means the system of equations has just one solution. Again, Desmos would have made this question so much easier. Just graph both equations and we can see that they intersect at one point. Remember that we're not interested in the x-intercepts of the parabola because we have a system of equations, so now we need to think of solutions as intersection points. In this case, the intersection is also the vertex of the parabola. This is a shortcut that occasionally makes these SAT questions easier, but it only applies when the system includes a perfectly horizontal line. The vertex is a clear changeover point, where a horizontal line goes from crossing the parabola twice, to hitting just the once at the vertex, to completely missing the parabola when there's a gap between them. But the vertex doesn't work when the line has a slope, like in this example. Once again, Desmos would easily show that this system has no solutions because the parabola and line do not intersect. Remember that we don't care about the x-intercepts when the SAT gives us a system of equations. We could also use the discriminant, but it's even more difficult to use because there are more steps when we merge and rearrange the equations. But when we substitute our values of a, b, and c into the discriminant formula, we get a negative number, which means that there are no solutions. You might be thinking, why would I ever use the discriminant when Desmos just shows me the answer so quickly and easily? Well, sometimes the graph will be hard to read, and you'll need to zoom in or out to see the lines or intersections. Other times, the SAT will reverse the question, like this. In this example, the SAT is leaving out part of the equation. If we tried to find the values of a, b, and c, we'd be stuck. We don't know the value of b. The question would simply tell us that b is a constant. The question will tell us the number of solutions and ask us to find the value of b to get the desired number. This time, it's probably better to use the discriminant formula. In fact, it might not even be possible to use Desmos. We can still substitute the values for a and c into the formula, and we would set the discriminant equal to zero because that's the condition that gives us one solution. The missing b is now a variable that we can solve for. We would get that b could be positive or negative six. There are ways to solve using Desmos, but they require some clever strategies. If the question had multiple choices, then we could guess and check by trying out those values for b. We could also use a slider, which lets us check lots of values for b all at once. By adjusting the slider, we can see the graph change. Eventually, we would find the value that makes the parabola touch the x-axis only once. You can see that it happens when b is both 6 and negative 6. When we go slightly higher or lower than 6, we get either zero solutions or two solutions. As you can see, there are a lot of ways that the SAT can ask you for the number of solutions, and you need to be flexible and find the most efficient way to answer. Let's review the essentials. First, remember that we can always go back to the number of x-intercepts for a parabola in the xy-plane. The number of solutions is probably easiest to see in Desmos when we have a quadratic equation equal to y. But we can also use Desmos when the equation is equal to zero, or if it's in a weird format that only has x variables. In those cases, the solutions will show up as vertical lines, and we should count them to find the number of solutions. Unfortunately, when there are zero solutions, the graph will be blank, so make sure you zoom out to see if there are any hidden lines on the outskirts of the graph. You can always rewrite the equation by replacing the zero with y to make it look like a parabola again. Or you can use the discriminant formula, which will always work, even when the equation is missing a value of a, b, or c. This formula must be memorized, and that includes understanding how the value of the discriminant tells us the number of solutions. When the discriminant is positive, there are two solutions. When it's equal to zero, there is only one solution. And when the discriminant is negative, there are no real solutions. Remember that none of this applies if the SAT is asking for the number of solutions for equations that do not have any x squared terms. That topic is a little easier to understand and memorize because linear equations are more simple. But the discriminant and Desmos should be all we need to find the number of solutions when we do have an x squared. It's a lot to memorize, but it is almost certain that you will see at least one of these questions on every SAT, usually in the hard module. If you can master this topic, you will guarantee yourself these hard points on every SAT.